Elizabeth Bones. And I'm Brian Rivera. We are representing the Chicago Ridge Library. We are interviewing Patrick Short on Monday, May 8th. 2017 at the Chicago Ridge Public Library. This interview is being conducted as part of the Next Generation Grant for the Veterans History Project at the Library of Congress and the Illinois Veteran History Project. Funding for the Project Next Generation Grant was awarded by the Illinois State Library, a department of the Office of Secretary of State, using funds provided by the U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services under the Provisions of the Library Services and Technology Act, LSTA. Can you please provide your full name? Patrick Leland Short. What is your date of birth? 24th of May, 1950. Where were you born? Jacksonville, Arkansas. Morris Short was my dad, and my mother was Eleanor Ryan, was her maiden name. What are, were their occupations? Whose occupations? Parents. My occupation? or parents. They both were, uh, worked in a bank. I went to Holy Trinity Grammar School, and then I went to Harrison High School, and after that I went in the service. Did you work before joining the service? Yes. I worked part-time. so, what job did you have? Uh, warehouse work. Nineteen sixty eight. How old were you when you started serving? Eighteen. Did you enlist or were you drafted? I was drafted into the Army, but I joined the Air Force. How many years were you intentionally signed up to serve? Four years. How long did you actually serve? Three years and ten months. What branch of service did you serve with? The Air Force. Why did you choose the specific branch? Do you have a reason for joining that particular branch? Mm -hmm. How far, how deep can I get into this? Uh, um, I had too many friends that came, didn't come home by then. So you can get as deep as like, you feel comfortable. Um, we don't want you to go. Okay, I understand. You know what I mean? <clears throat> what was the highest rank that you held? Sergeant. How did it feel when you started your service experience, and was it scary? A great adventure. That's how it felt at first. How did you adapt to military life? Difficulty. <laughs> where did you attend basic training, and where were you stationed? Basic was at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. And then I got sent to a Navy base called Port Wanimi in California for training. And then from there to Chanute Air Force Base in Central Illinois. How long did you have to train per day? Per day? Well, Basic was basically all day. Uh, Port Wainimi, uh, about 12 hours a day. What was basic training like? Hard. <laughs> what were the living conditions like? In basic, we were still, the Air Force was still using barracks that they built in World War II. Um, there was no inside walls, so you could see the sunlight come up in the morning through the walls. Um, there was a, sometimes you'd think Texas, 
but at nighttime it did get cold in January. Could you talk? Could you call and talk to your family during basic training? No. What was the food like? Air Force food was terrible. And you had to, whatever they put on your tray, you had to eat. And you just walked down the line, you held your tray out like that. Were you able to have a social life? What types of things did you do for fun? We went to USO dances. Uh, I was in during the Christmas holidays. And so they gave us a night off and the USO put a dance on at the uh, gymnasium. Where were you stationed after basic training? Chanute Air Force Base in Illinois. Where were your, were your living conditions different than basic training? Yes. We had individual rooms. Um, two men to a room. You could have a radio. But this was 1968-69, so in central Illinois there was one TV channel. At nighttime we got WLS radio from Chicago, and that was it. Was the food different at your new base? Yes, it was, it was okay. Do you have any basic training stories you would like to share? Uh, not really. It was just kind of vanilla. You know, you just got up and learned how to march. Everybody, nobody had hair, and everybody was in a green uniform. When you finished basic training, what position did you hold? I was a one-striper airman, and that was a trainee in California. Just uh, in school, so to speak, we, you, I was a heavy equipment operator and we learned how to drive bulldozers and cranes and, um, you know, just dump trucks, things like that. That's so what we did all day. Did you receive any specialized training for that position? I did, yeah. I. Because of the Air Force, we had different equipment. The school was a Navy base, and so some of our equipment was different than the Navy's. Do you feel that you received enough training? Yes. What were the rules in the military? The Uniform Code of Military Justice, I think that's what they called it. Um, I guess in a nutshell, in f civilian life, the police or the rules presume you're innocent, but in the military you're presumed guilty to be proven innocent. Did you serve in any wars? Yes. How many wars did you serve in? One was enough. Which war or conflict did you serve during? Vietnam. Where were you stationed during war time? I was at Monkey Mountain. Were you in the front lines or the back lines? There were no real lines. Did you wear any protective gear? I sat on a flak vest. It was just too heavy and hot to wear around, so I sat on it. Did you have a lot of equipment to carry? No, I basically drove heavy equipment. What job did you have during wartime? heavy equipment operator and at nighttime guard duty. What were your living conditions like during wartime? 
Well, they weren't as bad as the Army or the Marines. I mean, we had barracks. Um, yeah, we did okay. Did you sleep in tents, on the ground, or in sleeping bags? No, we had rooms. How was the food during wartime, and did you eat local food? <laughs> We found out that the uh, Navy had the best food and, and that we were, the unit I was in, we could travel around. So we always tried to eat at a Navy base. Um, it seemed like they had fresh fruit, fresh dairy. The Air Force seemed to have a lot of chicken and sea rations. The Army, we didn't want to go there. Jungle. Can you describe the scenery? Just very, very intense jungle. We were on a little base on top of Monkey Mountain. Um, we actually built it. It was a big radar station. And it was for the Air Force and the Navy to direct planes. Uh, you know, around Vietnam. What was the weather like where you were stationed? Up on the mountain, it rained a lot. We were up in the clouds, you know, uh, a good deal. How did you feel while you were serving? How did I feel? I felt like just a young man that uh, nothing was going to happen to me. Protect you from diseases, animal, or bug bites? Yeah. Lots. <laughs> How did you stay in contact with your family and friends back home during wartime? Mail. No. That was it. Were you able to travel around when you had downtime? Um, the Americans, we had control of the streets, of you know, the little villages and stuff during the daytime. But at nighttime, we didn't. So we were told you had to be back on base by 6 o'clock. Did you get to see any sights? No, I didn't. Was there anything that stood out about the culture or countryside? It's a very beautiful country. And the people were passionate about whichever side of the war they were on. If you were in a tropical country where there were lots of bugs. Yeah. Did you have bug repellent or nets to protect you? They gave us, yeah, I guess you call it bug repellent. Didn't work too good, but. What did you do for recreation when you were off duty? Read. I had, when I was in high school, I had an English teacher that got me interested in reading. And my sisters and my girlfriend at the time would send me uh, books. And so when I had time, I would read. I read the whole. Um, what was the name of it? Return of the King, uh, The Hobbit, all of that, that whole series. I read it while I was there. How did you f deal with the different language and culture? I didn't interact with the people too much. You know, so I was just basically with Americans. Were you given any training or Phrases to, phrases to help you communicate with the local people? <clears throat> <clears throat> um, stopped it was just, I think it was Didi Mao. <laughs> I think that's the only thing I can remember. Basically, you were stationed? Yeah. What did 
did they do? We had uh, laundress, ladies who did our laundry for us. And we could get a week's worth of uh, uniforms washed. And they weren't ironed, they were just washed, which was okay. I think it was for like, something like $2. Did the local citizens dislike you? I think the uh, Vietnamese men didn't like the American men because the Americans were always trying to date to go out with their wives. Do you have any stories you would like to share? No, not really. It just it was war. We had uh, military, it was uh, MPC they called it, and it was just a money that they would, so they wouldn't issue American greenbacks or American money from here. They gave us this MPC, and the purpose was if the North Vietnamese, who was the enemy, got American dollars, they could come to the United States and buy weapons and bombs and things like that and then ship it back. How did you return home? Uh, in an airplane. Who greeted you when you returned home? A couple of my friends picked me up at the airport. How did you readjust civil life after serving? It took a while. Firecrackers made me jump uh, New Year's Eve in 1972. Somebody made a big firecracker and I, I dove into a snowbank. So it took a while. Did you return the job you left or were you discharged? When I came back from the war, I got sent for a few months up to Minot, North Dakota, and as a heavy equipment operator, and I plowed snow. And then when I got out of the service, um, I worked on cars as a mechanic for a while, and then I got a job as a crane operator in a steel plant. Did any of your siblings serve in the military? No. Can you recall your instructors? Oddly enough, I only res recall one that was in the Navy when I was at Port Wainimi. And that's the only guy I can remember. I don't remember his name, but I can remember him. What did your uniforms look like and were they comfortable? It was like a blue suit, you know, and it had all the stripes and, you know, U.S. and all that stuff on there. Were there different uniforms for different events? Yeah. You had the blue was the dress uniform. Then we had khakis we wore as a um, casual, kind of like, it would be like for now. And then you had fatigues for work. To get dirty. What gear were you provided for different weather conditions? Well, in Vietnam, we were given tropical uniforms, real lightweight material. North Dakota, you know, we got parkas and long johns and, you know, stuff to keep you warm. Your long underwear if it was cold? Mm hmm Did you have to pay for these uniforms with your own money? No. If your boots wore out, were you able to get new ones? Mm-hmm. Did you carry a canteen of water? Yes. What did you do if you ran out of water? Just waited till I got to where I could refill it. <laughs> How did you get 
get paid? We're at overseas or in the States. In the States, we just got a check. And you would go to the, there was like a credit union on base. You could cash it. Overseas, you got MPC. Did you get paid each week? No, bi-weekly, every two weeks. Were you able to send the money off base or did you send it home? I sent some of it home. Was the money you got paid in enough to live on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is, it's $99 a month. And I usually have money left over. But you see, they gave me my board, in my room. They gave me my uniforms. They gave me my food, my medical. So really, my paycheck was just money to go go out with. Did you encounter any animals? Yeah, yeah. Wild or domestic? Wild. What kind of animals? Lynx. Up in North Dakota, we had lynx as a wild cat, and then we had snow bunnies. Um, in Vietnam, snakes, lots of snakes. That's about it. Did you have a pet? No. Where were you when the war ended? When the war ended, I, when the, the war ended, I think, what, 1973 or so? I'm not sure where I was at. I'll tell you the truth, I was just trying to put it out of my mind. What, your ex what were your experiences at the end of the of war or the end of your military service? Well, I was in North Dakota when I ended my Air Force career. They had asked me to re-enlist and I decided I wouldn't. Um, and I was just cleaning snow off of missile sites is what I was actually doing at the time. Did you have any professional, re personal reflections that you would like to add? I think everybody should serve. Did you receive any medals? Um, yeah. Which one? The presidential unit citation. How many? Twice. Did you marry before or after you served? Well, after. Did you have any children? Yes, I do. Do you have grandchildren? Yes. I have two grandkids right now, a boy and a girl, and I have three children. Uh, the oldest uh, is Lee, and he's 39, and then I have uh, Catherine and Greg, and they both went to Our Lady of the Ridge. No. Do you have any friends? Did you have any friends when you were serving? Yes. Did you keep in contact with any veterans who served while you did? No. What did you learn from your time in the service? Stick together. Do you have any photos or objects still as a memory? I have a few photos. I had a big box of them that I don't know what happened to. Are you a member of any veterans organizations? If so, which ones? I'm a member of the Red Horse Association. Red Horse is the name of the unit that I was in in Vietnam. How do you think the military now compares to when you served? A lot better. 
better training, better training, better food, better equipment. But in some ways, I think they they have it worse. We had tours, and now the young men, it seems like they just keep going and going and going and going. What message would you like to leave for future generations who will view this interview? Mm, the future, that if you believe in America, Protect it. Pardon me? Were your instructor, instructors at boot camp nice or were they mean? Mean. They had to. There was a, a reason behind it. They had a short time, they had 12 weeks to get us ready to go to war. We were carefree kids, you know, like I don't know if you ever saw the movie American Graffiti where the guys were always just in hot, fast cars and going to the hamburger stands and stuff like that. And, and that was all of us. We were just young, wanting to have a good time and they had to, teach us to not think about dying and killing and stuff like that. Were your instructors very um, disciplined? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Did any of the people you, you met in basic training go to Vietnam with you? I don't know because there was only two of us from my basic flight that went to become uh, equipment operators. And then I was the only one that went from there to Chanute Air Force Base. And so then when I got picked to go to Red Horse, there was nobody in there that I went to school with. Took a lot of the joy out of life. How did your family feel for you being Pardon? How did your family feel for you being there? No, my mother was always worried. Um, and I always told them that I was in a safe place. And so now in the last three or four years, they're finding out that I wasn't. So there's been a big change of uh, the way they thought of me. Were you treated different back home because you served in the war? Definitely. Yeah. I was spit at. Um, I was called a baby killer. Um, and then I guess Vietnam vets were kind of considered like just dope addicts and druggies and stuff. And that might have been true about behind the line, so to speak, um, guys. But usually the elite units um, were pretty straight. You know, you had to be to, you know, to stay on guard. I'm not saying that, you know, we didn't, when we had our downtime, we would go to the clubs and we would, more than a few times got drunk, you know, but that was on off time. They just didn't know. Is there anything you 
Anything you feel like we haven't discussed or should be added to this interview? No, it's a lot of it's thought provoking to me. Stuff that I've kind of put in the closet. We'd like to thank you for serving and thank you for coming today and sharing your story with us and for many people that will see it in the future. Thank you.